Good morning everybody, welcome to this morning's worship. We are blessed to be here today, we are blessed to be together today. We are blessed to be a family in this church. We are blessed that God is with us. Let us enjoy God's blessing as we worship him today. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the many blessings we have recognised today. Forgive us for the times that we are too busy to notice all that you pour upon us. We pray for blessing on our church, the community as a whole, and every precious individual member. Bless us with your wisdom and understanding. We pray for blessing on our local community. Help us to be a source of blessing. Help us to recognise ways we can show and share your love. We know there are often barriers. When we are the barrier, perhaps through our fears, our worries, even our greed, give us the strength to overcome that your blessing may overflow to all around us. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today to thank you for all that you have done for us and what you continue to do for us. We thank you for life. Sometimes, dear Lord, we are weak and we come short of your glory. We ask for your forgiveness of our wrongdoings and guidance throughout our living. Dear God, as we pray for our world, we ask that, we, that you give us your spirit of love for all people, despite colour, creed, culture and difference. Dear Father, we ask that you drive away despair from our politics and from our politicians. Be with our leaders as they make important decisions that will affect our daily living. Establish your just and gentle rule where there is conflict. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for our local community and for those that work with our young people, striving to promote peace in our community. Loving God, we ask for your healing touch on all who are ill and suffering. We especially pray for those we know that are experiencing emotional pain and those that are broken in spirit because of personal or family problems. Merciful Lord, give us courage and faith and especially to all those that have been bereaved and are finding it hard to deal with their loss. We pray that by sharing their thoughts and feelings and grief with you, that they may find peace and strength to face the future. We ask you to draw close to those who are finding life hard, that they may be aware of your loving and healing presence. We also pray for all those that care for others the carers, hospital staff, all of the NHS, the doctors, the counsellors, the teachers, the leaders, and our pastor Cathy, who gives so much to help others. Keep them stronger, Lord, in the face of adversity. Everlasting God, send us out into this world renewed by our worship and strengthened by our fellowship and your love, so that we too may be a witness to the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. The first reading will be from Jeremiah 17, verses 5 to 10. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. The person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a soul where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. The second reading will be from Luke 6, verses 17 to 26. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there and a great number of people all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him 
and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people who tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. Imagine the scene. It's a fine baking contest kitchen with a team of top pastry chefs given the task of creating the most fabulous baked apple pastries ever. They've been provided the basic recipe by a renowned chef in the field, passed on by word of mouth by a trusted messenger. All ingredients for success then. One would think that, but not the case. The problem is that the team of chefs disagree with what they've been given. They have a better idea of how to tackle the problem and come up with a different way of doing things. The messenger tries to tell the team that to complete the task that is set, they will need to stick to the basic elements of the recipe, otherwise what is produced will not be suitable to be judged. The apple must be a major ingredient in it, otherwise it will not be able to be described as apple, nor taste of apple. The pastry shapes must resemble those specified by the renowned chef, otherwise they will be creating something according to their own recipe rather than according to the chef's design. If the chef has insisted the dish must be able to be eaten by vegetarians, there's no point putting lard in the pastry, no matter how much the team of chefs prefer to make pastry in this way. A vegetarian just will not eat it. The problem of going off at a tangent and ignoring the recipe is not down to creativity on the part of the team of chefs. It's down to a number of other things. It's a matter of thinking that they can do exactly what they want without reference to anyone else. It's a matter of possessing the power to change things. Unchecked. And considering that they have the backing and the favour of their supporters. The day of the judging has arrived. The pastries have been baked, the team are laughing. What can possibly go wrong? There's another team baking to the same recipe in this competition, only the team members are less well known and less prestigious. They do take the instructions provided by the renowned chef seriously though. They prepare everything carefully with great attention to detail. They're less confident of winning the contest, however, because they realise they are up against so many top chefs in the opposing team. The day of the judging has arrived for them also. Their pastries have also been baked. They're not laughing, they're nervous and apprehensive. Will what they have provided pass inspection? The judging looks for quality in what has been produced, both visually and taste-wise. However, they also look for adherence to the renowned chef's design and recipe and the suitability of the pastries to be eaten by the tasting panel, all of whom are vegetarians. It will not come as any surprise to learn that the team who won the contest were those who least thought they'd make the grade but who actually were the only ones to complete the task to perfection. What human being, beings value most in life is not always what God values most. People think what brings them happiness is power, riches and entertainment, but we find time after time that those who spend their lives in the service of others, whether or not they have the means to be powerful and rich, find greater happiness and fulfilment and those who seek purely to look after themselves and make sure they are all right. 
The prophet Jeremiah talks about God's blessings falling on those who have the right attitudes to living their lives out practically. He says success is all down to a person's heart being in the right place, close to God and not led, led on by the false thinking of human beings. It's a bit tricky saying this because some people will immediately pounce on people who don't have the same outlook on life as they do and say to them, don't trust in human thinking, trust in God. When actually the person they are criticising is following God's heart and is not trusting in the traditional way of interpreting God's word. Recently, I watched a program on telly about a couple of celebrities visiting a religious sect in America who had not moved on to living in the modern world. If you think this thing through, merely living in a way without the trappings of modern life doesn't necessarily make you into a more godly person. Whether one lives in the style of people prior to the invention of electricity and television and mobile phones and combustion engines and computerised gaming consoles, or live one's life out in the presence of all these things in the modern world, a person is still challenged by temptation of one sort or another. They're still asked to make a choice between turning towards the Lord with their heart or following human ways of thinking, sometimes in the guise of religious practice and piety. Jeremiah tells us that the people whose heart turns away from the Lord like a bush in the wastelands, where there is little water to feed on, but where there is water, it is full of salt and not conducive to plant life. If one's heart is with the Lord, then one displays compassion and love and service of others. What is so wonderful about Jeremiah's words in this passage is that image of the person who trusts in the Lord as being like a tree planted by water. And even in the years when drought comes, it still continues to bear fruit. Yes, I think to myself, I want to be like that tree planted by the water. Jesus' words in Luke chapter 6 are widely known as the Beatitudes, due to Jesus announcing blessings upon those whose heart is with God, rather than running after the kind of human plans that are not in tune with God's heartbeat. Jesus then goes on to mention a series of woes, which appear as opposites to the blessings. In each of these four cases, one type of person is blessed and its counterpart is cursed. So we have the poor versus the rich. The poor have the kingdom of God, whereas the rich have already received their comfort. We have those who hunger now versus the well-fed. The hungry will be satisfied whereas the well-fed will go hungry. Then we have those who weep now versus those who laugh now. Those who weep will laugh, and those who laugh will mourn and weep. Finally, we have those who are hated, excluded, insulted and rejected, those who find themselves considered evil because of Jesus they will find their day of reward, joy and rejoicing in heaven, in the good company of God's prophets, who were treated in exactly the same way by people who rejected them. The uncomfortable thing that follows is a corresponding woe that applies to those of whom everyone speaks well. The warning comes that the false prophets down the ages got this kind of acceptance and welcome too. What is happening in this passage is that many consider themselves to be counted among those favoured and blessed by God, whether it be riches, food and drink, enjoying their lives and having cause to laugh. There are those who find acceptance among the crowds and those that matter, even among those who account themselves as religious. They need to reconsider where their heart is in relation to Jesus and draw closer to God. It is a warning that if everything is comfortable in your life, then maybe you are not keeping God in your life and have ceased to serve him or represent him before others. When Jesus speaks of the blessings that are in store for those who are going through great hardship and rejection and sorrow in their lives, this gives us heart 
and encourages us to persevere. God has not forgotten us just because we're being treated badly by other human beings. Our distress is really a sign of real movement taking place in the thinking of the people around us. They are feeling challenged by what they don't yet fully understand. But one day they might. And you will have played a part in the grand scheme of things. The blessings strengthen our resolve to get stuck in to help sort out the problems of people in this world. We need God's heart for discernment in order to work out who is trying to push us into a corner and influence the way we will be leading our lives from this day onwards. We need to know that it is usual, even if we should not be regarded should not regard it as normal to meet with opposition so that we do not mildly accept things as they are but question them and work to create a better way one that is more in keeping with God's heart of love and compassion so stay close to Jesus and keep on drawing from him the water of life that never gives up that always brings us refreshing and which enables us to bear much fruit in our lives let us pray. Lord, as we step into this week, help us to cultivate our relationship with you. We want to be rooted in you. Show us our barriers to receiving your blessing. Help us not only to recognise how blessed we are, but also show us ways that your blessing can overflow to others around us. Amen. say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all 
forevermore. Amen. Uh